this is the right way to revise. And first of all, I want to thank you for having gone through all the lessons up to this point to get to number eight. I know a lot of you uh, were worried about revision right from the beginning, and I thank you for having enough confidence in me to withhold fast forwarding to what to do with revision until this point. But now, at this point, your book is done. Your book is done. And quite frankly, if you followed the seven rules that I've shared with you up to this point, your book is written well. I know you may not feel that it is. You may not feel that it is. Uh, and that's not an unusual feeling. Oftentimes when a book is written as quickly as I've asked you to write this one, we have no conscious recollection of exactly what appeared on the pages. So we have a tendency to think the worst. Now, the right way to revise. There's several steps I'm going to go over here. I'm going to try to go over them slowly enough that you can copy down exactly what I'm sharing as I share it. The first and most important thing to keep in mind about revision is this. Those three R's of writing I talked about several lessons ago, you need to follow those not only every time you write, but every time you revise as well. So take those three or four minutes to get into that author within connected state, and then the first step of revision is to review your material. Read over it. Read over it marking any major changes you want to make. Structural changes only, major changes. Major changes equate to major additions, major subtractions, major rearrangements you want to make. Now what I would suggest is get three different colored post-it notes. One for additions, one for subtractions, one for rearrangements. And when you see where you want to make an addition, write it on the post-it note and stick that piece of paper, that post-it note on that piece of paper. Same thing with subtractions and rearrangements. After you've done that, don't look at punctuation, spelling, and grammar up to this point. Just major changes. After you've noted the major changes, step two, go back and make those changes. Go back and make those changes. Three, post-writing research. Remember those gaps I told you to leave in your manuscript? Fill them in. Fill them in. Fill in the gaps which comprise your post writing research. After you've done that, the structure, the firm structure of your book is now complete. And now we can go inside the actual words and sentences and paragraphs and phrases of your book and fine tune that to a high level. We do that through what I refer to as enhancing, as enhancing. Now, before I go into talking to you about how to enhance, I want to tell you, the enhancing of your manuscript may take several weeks. It'll take longer to enhance the manuscript than it will to have written it. What I suggest is you go to my website, www.writeyourbookin5, the numeral, day, numeral five, days.com. You'll see a program on there that's available that was comprised by one of my students called the Ultimate Writing Program, the Ultimate Editing Program, excuse me. The Ultimate Editing Program enables you to shrink this enhancing drill, which I'm going to describe to you, down into several days as opposed to several weeks or several months. Okay. Here's what the enhancing program is. Here's what you need to do. Get four different colored highlighters. Take one highlighter and go through your entire manuscript and highlight any action verbs. Sweep number two. We're going to be making six sweeps through here. Sweep number two. Go through and take another highlighter and highlight all of your passive verbs. Sweep number three. This is where you use the last two highlighters to highlight any adjectives and adverbs you may have in your manuscript. Sweep four. Look at each one of your action verbs. Look at each action verb and ask yourself, in each case, is this exactly the action verb I want to use? If it is, leave it. If it's not, change it. Sweep number five. Look at your passive verbs. Passive verbs don't carry in any, any imagery, any heart, any action, any passion. And quite frankly, if you've got too many passive verbs, people are going to fall asleep on your writing. Ideally, you want at least 65% action work verbs to 35% passive verbs. So look at all your passive verbs. Ask yourself in each case, can I move this sentence around, this phrase around, this paragraph around to get rid of so many passive verbs, so many passive verbs, and replace them with action verbs? Then look at your adjectives and adverbs. Oftentimes, when we initially write with a weaker verb structure than is possible. 
we have a tendency to subconsciously accentuate the overuse of verbs and adver adjectives and adverbs. And when we do that, once we've fine-tuned our verbs like I'm teaching you to do, if we leave all those adjectives and adverbs in there that we no longer need, we have what is referred to as wordy writing. So why don't you go back through your manuscript and pluck out any adjectives or adverbs you no longer need. That concludes the enhancing phase. Now again, Mike, what Mike Smith's program, the ultimate editing program, enables you to do the enhancing program, what I just described to you, in hours as opposed to weeks. You may want to go to my website and check that out. After you've finished your enhancing, then you take your writing and type it onto your computer or speak it. Uh, the speaking, the voice activization program I recommend is Dragon Naturally Speaking. Get it on your computer. After you've done that, and you have to put it on, you have to be the one to write it or speak it into your computer. Because as you're writing or speaking it onto your computer, you have to smooth out any sharp edges that may have been left from all the other um, revision that we've done up to this point. Once you get in there, print it out as a hard copy. Read through it one more time. Just to make sure the flow is there. After you've read through it one more time, your book is done. It's finished, it's complete, you want to send it out. As a result of that, now you may find this hard to believe, but as a result of that, you'll be sick of your book. See, writing a book is like having a relationship, whether it's professional or personal. When that relationship's over, you know it's over. And when you're done with your book, it's not that you'll hate it, it's just that you don't want to hang out with it anymore because your relationship with it is complete. That's a good thing. Last point I want to make is sometime during the revisionary process, your next book is going to want to come out. Now, you may expect me to say, don't let that book out. No, what I strongly suggest you doing is devoting 30% of the time you have set aside for writing to releasing that second book out during the revisionary process. Why? But, well, because by this time, you will have become positively addicted to your writing. You're going to be kind of jonesing for it, you know? And when you're doing the revision, you won't be writing. And so you're going to be missing it. So if you have some writing that you can do during the revisionary process, that creativity, that creativity fulfills the, the revisionary process enough that it becomes palatable, easy to do. You'll actually get it done. That, in its essence, is one of the keys to being able to make it through the revisionary process with the same type of passion and intensity that you had when you initially wrote your book. That, in combination with everything else I've covered in this section, is the right way to revise your book.